If anyone says that a man can be justified before God by his own works, whether done by his own natural powers or through the teaching of the law, without divine grace through Jesus Christ, let him be anathema. Hey everyone, this is Josh Smith. I wanted to touch on some thoughts that I've been having. Um, what we are in the 500th anniversary of the Protestant Reformation. It was the main dividing point for Christians over the past 500 years. Uh, we have so many different denominations now in terms of Christianity, Protestant Christianity, Orthodox Christianity, Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterians, you name it, there are thousands of different belief systems and a lack of unity between them. And the dividing point really came between Martin Luther and his 95 thesis on uh, the Wittenberg door in Germany. And I wanted to touch on the Council of Trent. In my dialogues with uh, a, a wide variety of Christians, a lot of them point to this council uh, and the documents that were in it as kind of the key point or the key uh, you know, evidence that the church believes in a works salvation model or that one needs to do works and work on their own merit and uh, so on and so forth in order to be saved. After hearing a lot of that in my dialogues with people, I was like, you know what? I need to just actually go and read the document itself. And what I found was just really fascinating was that none of that was true. The church, the Catholic church that is, has a very hard stance against anything that is in the absence of the grace of God. And because of that, I think there is a lot of misunderstanding and misinterpretation and misrepresentation of what the church actually believes in terms of justification and how works and faith work together. The canon that I read in the beginning of this video is canon one of, I think, session 16? Session six, canons concerning justification in particular. Effectively, what the canons are saying is that, look, we agree nobody can be saved on their own merit. It's entirely because of God and his grace, and that grace is being bestowed upon man. It's a freely gifted thing. There's nothing we can do to actually obtain that. Eternal life is purely a gift from God. Where the dividing line tends to be is between this state of justification, if you will, and how that works together throughout the lifetime of a believer. And the church does and always has taught free will doesn't cease just because you now are a justified individual. You now are a son of God. You still have free will. You still have the choice to choose sin or to choose life. That ability to choose still falls on us. So there is a necessary cooperation with God's grace. If anyone says that without the predisposing inspiration of the Holy Ghost and without his help, Man can believe, hope, love, or be repentant as he ought, so that the grace of justification may be bestowed upon him. Let him be anathema. If anyone says that without God, you can obtain the grace of justification, well, that's just nonsensical. It's a free gift given to us by Christ, by God, through his Son, and that's entirely not are doing. God moves us to himself and we have to choose to accept that movement. I like to use the analogy of a car engine and you have valves that allow gas to flow into the engine. God is the fuel and we are the engine and when we say yes we are allowing God and his grace to flow through us. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit is now in our hearts. And when we open up and say yes to God every day, to his love, to loving our neighbor as ourself, we are allowing God to flow out through us as a channel of his grace. And that is where 
our cooperation comes into play when it comes to God's grace in our lives and how that pertains to our justification.